Hey, I'm Josh from Vacuums RS in Colorado, and I am here today to answer the question, stick vacuums versus upright vacuum cleaners, uh, or traditional corded vacuum cleaners. I'm going to get into some, a couple of different demonstrations on carpet here, and I'm going to talk about, uh, after that, I'm going to talk about kind of the usability difference, how you're going to use a stick vacuum versus an upright vacuum in your day-to-day -day life. So first I've got down here, I've got down KPOC. It's a naturally occurring fiber that grows on trees. We use it in vacuum cleaner stores to simulate pet hair because people frequently, that is their big cleaning challenge is pet hair. They want to see how that works. So we're going to run both of these machines. I have, so I have over here Dyson's V11 Torque Drive Plus. This is one of their upper end stick backs. It's one of their kind of full size stick backs. They've got several out, V11, V12. Um, but this is kind of one of the more popular and mature platforms. And I have over here Recar's R40, which is the top of uh, Recar's product line in their uh, standard vacuums that plug in. So we're kind of comparing apples to apples as far as, uh, you know, Dyson's high end and then Recar's high end over here. All right, so moment of truth. So what I see happening here is I see very little difference in performance on the simulated pet hair between Recar's R40 and Dyson's stick back. Um, I guess you could maybe look, maybe there's a little bit of powder that's left behind from the stick, possibly, I guess. But overall, I see very little performance difference. I think the V11 did very well here. <clears throat> and that's where we're gonna depart. Um, and that's part of the reason why stick backs are, from a marketing perspective, so very successful, because they do very well on the surface. What we're gonna talk about next is deep down cleaning, and that's where our performance diverges and diverges dramatically. So I've put down some rice here, um, and what this is going to help us see is the level of agitation these two different machines are able to create. If you've been down the rabbit hole for a while in the vacuum cleaner demo videos, you've probably seen a lot of people in my industry talk about the importance of agitation when cleaning wall-to-wall -wall carpet. Um, that kind of creates this vibration, this little mini earthquake in the carpet. It causes the heavier debris to come, bounce up and work its way up so the vacuum can pick it up. The rice doesn't sink into the carpet, um, but it, it sits on the surface and it's gonna give us a really good visual of the different levels of agitation these machines are able to create. And as far as mimicking debris, it's very similar to some of the large particles you might have in your house, like kitty litter or maybe cereal, um, smaller particles of debris that uh, maybe the dog tracks in the back door. Um, so it's a really good demo material, but visually it is one of the best ways we have to visually demonstrate agitation differences between different models of vacuum cleaners. So I think it's pretty obvious um, the R40 has profoundly more agitation, which is really what this particular model is known for too. It is a great carpet cleaner for wall-to-wall for -wall carpets, um, but the difference is, is pretty stark. So for our final performance demonstration here, we've got just regular sand. It's pink so we can see it better. This is one of the most difficult materials for any vacuum cleaner to pick up. It's heavy, it's a small particle, so as you walk on your floor, the sand moves down in your carpet, and it's also very damaging to your carpet. It's sharp. Um, that's why we use sandpaper when we're sanding wood or sanding the finish off of a car. It's abrasive, and it's a significant part of our soil structures in all parts of the country, uh, more so in places like Colorado, where I'm at. So it's a big part of the dirt that you have to get out of your house. It's very important. And most people don't think about it because you don't see it. It's not pink in your house. It's earth tones. So you don't realize the amount of sand that's in there. But this is a really important demo. So we're going to move to a couple of bare floor tests here, but in conclusion, with our carpeting tests, I, I think that the big concern here is deep cleaning. Uh, it was really, really apparent when we looked at the amount of sand that the V11 stick back ground into the carpet. When we brought the Recar over there, we saw that there was sand all over the place, even in places we hadn't put the sand, because it had picked it up and kind of dropped it and kind of ground it in. We left all this sand on the surface, right? So in this demonstration, it was just on the surface. We went right over it. it. It kind of picked it up. My concern in the real world scenario is if we have a machine that only is picking stuff up on the surface and is grinding everything down, 
If that is your primary machine that you're using on a regular basis, your carpet is never going to get fully clean. The surface is going to look good and you're going to see lots of debris in the canister like we see here today and you'll feel like you did something, but there's a dirty little secret living inside of your carpet. All right, so we're going to do a test here on uh, hard surface. This is LVT that we're on, but really hard surfaces are all very, very similar cleaning challenges. We've got the pink sand. Um, I've also added some fruity pebbles here uh, as a different material. And then we uh, finally, the last row there is uh, going to be the rice again. I'm not using the simulated pet hair in this demonstration. It does not, not demo well on bare floor. It floofs all over the place. And frankly, it's not that hard for any machine to pick up because it's very light. So that demonstration is just going to show that anything can pick it up. All right, in conclusion, I see no difference on bare floor between the two units, between the Recar R40 and the Dyson V11 stick vac. So I'm going to talk about some of the practical usability differences and how you're going to use these types of products in your home and the significant differences between the two of them. And if you made it this far in the video, you might believe that I hate stick vacuums and particularly hate Dyson, especially after you saw the performance differences on the carpet, but that's not the case. Uh, I own a stick vacuum, not a Dyson, but regardless, I own a stick vac and they definitely have a place in most homes. My concern is that many companies choose to market these machines as machines that can replace traditional full-size upright vacuum cleaners. And as we demonstrated here, if you have wall-to-wall -wall carpet or even thicker area rugs, that's simply not the case. You're not going to be maintaining your floors and maintaining the cleanliness of your home if you're relying on this type of a product to clean your carpet. But this has a place. Uh, this machine is not a lightweight machine by any means. Now, Ricard does have a lightweight line that's a high-performing lightweight line, but this particular machine isn't by any means a lightweight machine. It's not convenient to just pull it out and pick up quick messes. Um, this machine, on the other hand, while not the lightest stick vacuum in the world, is certainly lighter than that. Being battery operated, you can hang it on the wall, you can grab it, and you can clean up a quick mess. This is not. You've got a 40 foot cord. You missed me rolling that up a couple minutes ago. That's a task, right? I mean, it took me 35, 45 seconds just to wind the cord up. So both of these machines have a place in your home. I typically, I kind of compare stick vacuums to weed whackers, right? If you're gonna mow your lawn and do it effectively, you need a weed whacker, right? But the idea that you can use the weed whacker to mow your entire lawn doesn't make any sense. I also push back a little bit on the concept that these are lighter or easier to use. And I push back pretty hard on that, especially on these larger models like the V11. You have to hold the entire vacuum cleaner in your hand as you're using it. And the actual weight that you're carrying as you're using this machine around your home is significantly more than the exertion that I personally feel that I'm putting into holding this handle and simply gliding the machine back and forth. So while technically this machine is lighter, I believe that in extended use, it's actually more tiring to use these type of machines than it is to use a traditional upright vacuum cleaner in practical application. So in conclusion, I, I, I definitely think these have a place in your home. As we saw on bare floor, I can't demonstrate a difference in performance on bare floor whatsoever. And I think kind of as a holistic approach, these have a place in your cleaning arsenal. But if you're hoping to replace a traditional upright vacuum for a magical stick vacuum that's going to make it super easy to clean your whole house in 15 seconds, we're not there yet. We're not the Jetsons. You're still going to have to vacuum your house if you want it to be truly clean, especially if you have wall-to-wall -wall carpet. But who knows? Maybe 20 years from now, my beard will be even grayer, and I'll be doing a video about the latest stick vacuum that can clean your whole house. I don't know. But for today, you're going to need a traditional upright vacuum cleaner if you have wall-to-wall -wall carpet.